My name is Gavin Evans and this is my review of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel Season 4 and this will be a spoiler filled review so if you haven't seen it, go and watch it then come back and watch this review because I will be going in depth. Now I really enjoyed the first season of Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, I loved the second. The third season started to lose me and typically with these kind of shows it's all downhill from there and this is a step up from season 3 but it's just not as good as it once was. You know, it's definitely got some good elements to it, but as a whole, I just find it to be completely lacking. And I think a big part of that is, I don't care about anything that's going on. Nothing. Zilp, zilch, nada. I don't care. You know, you've got the main storyline with Smidge here, and I was just wondering, what is the point of it? I thought they were going to comment on the overall sexualization of women in show business, but they never went there. In fact, they kind of look up to Midge walking up at a strip club, which I just fundamentally disagree with, and they just don't make her character grow. They don't challenge her, they don't change her, so it just makes everything feel so pointless. And at this point, it just feels like there's no end game, nothing that the show is building towards. So it just feels like it's going on for the sake of it. And I like the fact that in the last episode, Lenny calls her out for her stupid decision, but it's not based on her character, it's based on her career choices. But if I'm being honest, that big scene should have happened with Miriam and Lenny back in episode 4 of this season. We didn't need a whole season of Midge walking at a strip club just for Lenny to be like, yo, don't walk at a strip club. Like really? And then the second last episode, we get the story between Midge and this guy. She sleeps with him, and then it turns out the guy's married. And I thought that was such a great opportunity to dive deeper into this character. You know, the show began after Joe cheated on her with his secretary, and now she's the home record. And how does that make her feel? But they just play it off like a joke, and they just don't dive deeper into it. And it, it just feels like wasted potential time and time again. And like I said, Lenny is right about Midge. Her walking at a strip club is stupid. She's better than that. But that also falls down to Susie. Like, if she's so bad at managing Midge in her career, how can I root for her? And then Susie's storyline and character this season, I just found to be a mess. I hated the fact that there was this whole insurance plot in the very first episode. I don't buy that they wouldn't come up with some sort of fake story, and then they would talk about how they're lying in the same office. And then her sister sleeps with the insurance guy, and that's just it, never mentioned again. That just feels awfully easy. And like, I was at least expecting Midge to find out about the money and have her blow up because of it. And it causes a rift in their friendship. But nope, I thought that they might fight over Midge's stupid mindset. But nope, they don't fight over that. They eventually do fight in the very last episode. But it's just about those two gangster dudes. And I'm like, really? That's it? Like, they refuse to do anything permanent with these two. It's just, it's just become absolutely stagnant. And I like the idea of Susie becoming more successful without Midge. And you saw the potential last season with Sophie, but I think they realized they blew it. So then they try to do it again here, and I do like what they're going for. But then, it just kind of disappears, and it just makes you feel like, what was the point of all that? You know, you've got Sophie who hits walk bottom, which I didn't buy for a second, but then Susie gets her back up, gets her famous and beloved again, and then that's just it. Like, her and Midge get into it, and yeah, like, that's it. So it just makes you question, why was Sophie Lennon even in this season? What did she add? And the answer is absolutely diddly scroll. Now, the one aspect of Susie's character that I did like this season is that I thought the way they handled Jackie's death was actually quite impactful. You could see how broken up Susie was about it and how she didn't really know this guy that she spent all this time with. But then, after the funeral, it's just forgotten and never brought up again. So... Like, the show has good ideas, they just won't dedicate themselves to any specific path, and they refuse to cause more conflict or drama between the characters. 
And it's also quite clear that they don't know what to do with Joe now. You know, every scene with him and Midge now just seems so unneeded and I don't really care about their friendship or whatever. I actually wish they focused on him wanting his club more, but they don't. It just seems like an afterthought. Instead, they focus more on his relationship with Mei Lin, which I just don't care about. And why should I? Like, it's just another relationship for the sake of it. Mei Lin isn't given any bit of depth. Her only character traits is that she's Joel's girlfriend and she's Asian. That's it. You know, and then you got this whole plot of where she becomes pregnant. And they want me to think that's this terrible, awful thing. Like, she gets pregnant and she's like, no, I have to become a doctor. I have to become a doctor. And it's just such a backwards worldview that, you know, she's about to give birth to a beautiful kid. And her thought is, no, 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 I want to work the rest of my life and just, it's just, and that's just where there's a total disconnect between me and the show. They view motherhood absolutely terribly here. You know, Wars hates being a muzzle. Midge is a terrible muzzle. And... Uh, this girl gets pregnant and they treat it like a terrible thing and I don't I just I fundamentally disagree with the show winners on this point of view and they do it time and time again and it's a very deliberate choice now if you take a show like The Office which is one of my favorite shows of all time yes I'm pretty basic but whatever but there's one scene where Jim finds out that Pam is pregnant and all we see is his facial expression and He's just overjoyed and so happy and it is such a beautiful, incredible moment. You know, in a sitcom, you've got this just perfect moment and it makes me like the characters and like the show all the more. And here it's just like, oh, I'm pregnant. Oh my goodness, this is so awful. This is so terrible. It's just, yeah. And then you got this whole storyline with uh, Joel's dad who has a heart attack and it just seems very random. And then I thought that they were going to have it, so everyone's at the hospital, including Mei Lin. So she's going to get to know the family while they're waiting for Marsh to wake up. But they don't even do that. They just say that she's a random hospital worker and they just still keep her hidden. So it's just like, what got accomplished this season? Really. And then we've got Wars' matchmaker storyline, which is the absolute worst part of this season. It is ridiculously stupid, and all the girls going after her. Like, they thought they were being very smart and clever by playing it like a gangster story, but it just doesn't work. And any time Wars gets into an argument with Miriam now, I just zone out. It's a bunch of feminist bullshit, and it just, it's so on the nose, and it's happening more and more, and I'm getting really tired of it. And then we've got Abe, who doesn't have a storyline. Oh, uh, actually, no, that's not right. He does review things, and then people get mad at his reviews. I'm like, okay, I like this, and then it just disappears. And then it turns into this weird FBI plot where they're investigating him and George Constanza, and then Abe freaks out at George and his wife, and then just nothing really comes from it again. It's like they threw that whole plot away, and it wasn't even a good plot. And speaking of throwing plots away... Archie and Imogene, I believe at the end of season 3, were like, in a huge fight, Imogene went to work as a secretary, if I remember correctly, and just nothing came from that. So I thought that was really weird, and just, nothing has purpose now, nothing has weight, the show's just going on for the sake of it. You know, they've made Walls and Abe into main characters, and I feel like they work better as supporting characters. Tony Shalhoub is hilarious, but just keep them in the background, less is more, you know. And have a storyline about, you know, Joel having a kid with his new wife and Su Susie's becoming more successful with Midge and Midge is at a rock bottom job and it just shows how deeply that can affect her and how she's made her choices and now she's had to live with them even though everyone else is having a better life because of her decisions. But they just refuse to give this whole situation any bit of complexity, any bit of depths or nuance, they refuse to shame her, they just want to keep viewing her as empowering and once again that's where the disconnect happens. Now let's talk about the performances, Rachel Brosnahan is once again very funny, very charming, very good, but nothing new and once again she is the worst mom on the planet. Then you've got Alex Borstein, who I actually think is giving some of her best work here, I think she is just so funny. Like really great work from here even though there was one point where she's mad at Sophie for giving her a call because she doesn't want one but it's just like just sell the call 
I don't know. I thought that was dumb. Michael Zegan is good, but he just has nothing to work with now. And he's absolutely white about soup. He knows what he's talking about. Tony Shalhoub is good once again. I like some of the hot felt ele elements between him and Midge. But the whole fake story of them buying the place back for Midge is just completely unneeded. Like, why not just have some emotion there and have them be genuinely thankful? But they can't do that. Marion Hinkle, I don't care for. She's too over the top. Uh, Jane Lynch is good. I don't know if I mentioned this in one of my other reviews, but I was surprised to see that it's Jane Lynch. And then when I see it's Jane Lynch, I'm like, oh yeah, that totally is Jane Lynch. You've got Alfie Folo, who's uh, Susie's secretary. And I think she does a fine job. I just wish she had more to do. You've got Gideon Glick, who was weird as Alfie, but he makes it work. You've got Leroy McLean, who's back for one episode as um, Shy Barwin. And he's good. I like the bathroom scene with him and Midge, actually. I do think that's a good scene. But the whole plot of people watching over him, I thought was really dumb. Jason Roth isn't in the season much at all, but he has a very distinct personality in the time he is. George Costanza, Jason Alexander is good as always. Harry Neff, I just can't take seriously. Like, look, he's a dude. He's wearing a wig and pretending to be a, a girl, but you just don't buy it. It's just so obviously a man in a dress. <laughs> like, I just... You can't actually expect me to believe that this is a woman by any means. Like, it's just a complete joke. And his character is just so unneeded. I feel like they were building up to it a bit more, but then just nothing happens. You've got Luke Colby, who I still think does a fine job as Lenny Bruce, but he's kind of lost some of his mystique, lost some of his coolness. And it just doesn't feel like they know what to do with this character. Is he dating Midge or what's going on? Is... I don't know, you know, like, I like the one scene where he shows up at the strip club and, you know, jokes around with her, and even though they tell you that he did a great job in the last episode, I didn't really buy into that, so whatever, and Stephanie Husso, who plays Joe's girlfriend, uh, I hate the character, but honestly, she does a good job, she brings lots of energy to it, but she just isn't giving e enough material. I do think this show is still, once again, very well directed. I love the look of the fair in the first episode, and that scene in the Ferris wheel with them talking to each other is quite funny. It's still shot very well. The outfits look great. I love the soundtrack, especially when they use, well, why can't we be friends? That was mm, perfect. It still got charm, and I do think what ends up saving this season is just how funny it is. Like, this... Yeah, this show still cracked me up. There were quite a few scenes where I got a good laugh. And like the scene where Midge goes up on stage instead of that one guy and just says his act word for word was really funny. The fact that they changed Ethan's birthday because why not? The scene where Joe goes to the party, he's like, oh yeah, Abe was right behind us. And Abe comes up, he goes like, why didn't you hold the elevator open for me? So now I have to wait for it to go up nine floors and then down nine floors and up nine floors. That's 27 floors. I thought that was funny. Uh, him playing walk, paper, scissors was really funny. I thought the uh, Susie having job interviews was absolutely hilarious. I thought the one scene where Sophie visits Miriam and Dawes is there was really funny. I love it when Mitch says to Sophie, Oh, I get the laxative commercials now because you're so full of shit. That was great. Uh, the clothesline for <laughs> Susie's office really cracked me up. And I do like how they kind of touch on the fact that Comedy from life experiences is funnier than overdone jokes. I, I just wish there was more going on here. Like, there's enough charm. And this season is really funny. I was entertained, but where is this all going? Are the characters going to change or just be stagnant for the rest? Are they ever going to be challenged? Is anything relevant going to happen? It's just more of the same at this point. It needs to end. There's nowhere left to go. You know... This is serialized storytelling. It's not episodic. I don't watch Seinfeld and be like, oh, the characters aren't grown because it's done in an episodic format. But here, they're attempting to tell stories and they're attempting to give arcs. But they just don't succeed at any of that because they don't shame Marion and they don't dive deeper into the characters. You know, if they actually highlighted certain complexities and went for bigger ideas, then I would like to show more. 
and especially because this show is so progressive, like it has been from the start, but now it's getting to the point where there's just a total disconnect. Like I said, enough entertainment, it's really funny, but last season, sorry, next season is apparently the last, and I think that's a very good thing. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and give The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel Season 4 a 5 out of 10 with a slight recommendation. Okay, have you seen The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel Season 4? What did you think about it? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe. Stay tuned for some more videos soon, and Gavin out.